So as I uh, get started here, and, uh, th this is a, a map that kind of highlights the different projects I'm going to talk about. And at any one time uh, in the San Diego region, we'll have uh, someplace between 60 to 100 projects going that are in the pipeline, in the development pipeline at any one time. Uh, we will have uh, anywhere from uh, $500 million to sometimes uh, over a billion dollars under construction. And one of the, I think, fortes for San Diego and, and Sandag and our partners at Caltrans and our transit partners is that uh, we've sort of developed a lot of these projects in what I would characterize as an accordion style because in our world we're always chasing dollars and probably unfortunately, but these projects are getting harder and harder to get done. They take more time. And so these accordions always allow us to stretch or shrink depending on the opportunities that are presented. And that's, I think, what's many times has been uh, San Diego's competitive advantage because just on the raw politics, look, we're never going to compete against Los Angeles or, or San Francisco. Uh, we always lose on those competitions. But how we end up winning is we outperform them. And we're, we're readier with better projects. And I think that's been one of the fortes of of, of San Diego with not only our transportation folks, but a lot of our contractors that work in the area. So I'm going to walk through, this is a map that kind of highlights the projects I'm going to talk about. They're uh, spread out throughout the county. Uh, for those of you that might not be familiar, all the way north to State Route 76 to all the way south uh, in, the, in South County where we're working on a new border crossing. So let me first start with uh, what I would characterize as one of our real mega projects. Uh, this is what we call the North Coast Corridor. And, and we have named it this by design. Because very often in my business, uh, we always get into a fight on the road guys want more road, the transit guys want more transit, the bike and ped guys want more bike and ped stuff. And you know what we've been working hard at Sandag is we need all of those things. They all work together as part of a system. And it's really part of an overall transportation umbrella. And I think nothing epitomizes that more than what we're doing on I-5, where when we get done with it, about a $6 billion investment or improvement, uh, but it'll be a much better corridor in many, many different ways. Um, one of the unique things about I-5 is, and the North Coast Corridor is it's all in the coastal zone. So that means we got to go through the Coastal Commission. Uh, and for those of you that have had experience in going through the Coastal Commission, it could be fun. Uh, we just went through that. Uh, this is the largest project that the Coastal Commission has permitted. Uh, we worked with them for several years. Uh, but the fact that we took a holistic approach to trying to look at our transportation needs in this corridor, I'm very pleased to, to share here that earlier this summer, we got a unanimous approval from the Coastal Commission for a coastal permit to move forward with actually a staff recommendation that, that recommended to the Coastal Commission staff that they ought to approve this. And I would say that's a rare occasion for many that have worked with the Coastal Commission. Now the benefit to you, the taxpayers, in doing this holistic approach is by using one big permit like this, if we had done this project by project, we'd have been back to the Coastal Commission somewhere between 80 and 90 times. And so uh, you know, this allows us to go through one, uh, our stuff that we're doing here in San Diego is now being highlighted by the Coastal Commission is probably a model that other parts of the state ought to be following. But how we get to that is first focusing a little bit on the rail that it's not just about moving people and not just about moving cars, but about transportation in whole. And we recognize that I would argue that I-5 is probably one of the most important corridors for the region, very significant. It's our lifeline. It's how we connect to the rest of the globe in many, many ways. And we started out by looking at the fact that even though the Low Sand Corridor is the second busiest rail corridor in the United States today, about half of it is single track. So we, we are you know, limited as to trying to grow this rail service on a railroad track that only has one track that's used by freight, that's used by commuter rail, that's used by Amtrak, that's used by our trolley line. And so one of the things that we hope to do is uh, double track that and invest about a billion dollars in doing that. And I'll highlight that in just a few slides here. Moving next to, to you know, the focus here of moving people, not just cars, uh, the program also calls for a significant investment, ultimately adding 
two HOV or express managed lanes in each direction of I-5, a corridor that hasn't been touched in about 40 years. Uh, and this, this, these new express lanes will allow us to manage it in a way that we can always ensure that some premium service uh, on those two lanes by making it a priority for van pools and car pools and then selling the extra capacity should there, should there be any capacity or upping the, the carpool numbers. And so we expect to start uh, construction. Colleen's telling me I didn't advance the slide. We expect to start construction on that um, earlier, or, or actually early next year uh, with our success at the Coastal Commission. So that's a, a, a big win in terms of adding more capacity on a corridor. And the other thing I would share with I-5 is that's unique to us is that many of our other corridors uh, in the morning, you know it's gonna be congested may not be that way in the middle of the day, it may be congested in the afternoon, and the weekend's not as bad. i 5 is unique, and I think it, 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 it signifies why it's such an important corridor for San Diego. It is busy all the time, whether it's Saturday, sometimes it's busier on Saturdays and Sundays than it might be on Monday through Friday. So, kind of being creative and figuring out how we uh, take advantage of, uh, of opportunities here. Uh, we've also uh, built into this project a 27 mile a long bike path along Interstate 5. And we knew that we were going to have to build retaining walls anyway. So instead of building one big, tall, maybe ugly retaining wall, we're going to build two really cool retaining walls and build a bike trail into it, a 27 mile bike trail that will allow you know, other options in terms of how San Diegans get around. Uh, this was one of the things that I would highlight as a really important feature. Uh, that we were able to build into this project by looking at this holistically. And then kind of wrapping up on, on this particular corridor, uh, that it wasn't, there's other features, you know, we're building parking garages uh, to make sure we can handle the extra capacity on the train. Uh, we're building operational improvements. Uh, we got a team that's working with the employers in that corridor to find different ways to reduce uh, demand and, and carpool and do other things. So there's a lot of stuff happening, about a $6 billion investment. Will probably take us you know, 20, 30 years to get done, but we're gonna start uh, later this year. The, the rail piece of this, in the next 20 years, um, we expect to invest pro approximately a billion dollars and double track this 60 mile quarter, of which about half of it's double track today, as I mentioned earlier. We're currently working on 24 projects. They're in all phases, some in construction, some in planning. Um, we're uh, looking at replacing many of the bridges on this rail corridor over 100 years old and in need, bad need of replacement, so we're replacing them. Uh, we're adding a bunch of new safety pieces, uh, positive train control to mention one on the train track to you know, make it safer. So we got a lot going on, on the rail piece of it. And I'd like to highlight a few of the projects. Uh, first one is at Sorrento Valley uh, where we're doing some double tracking about a $31 million project. Um, you know, we started construction in February of this year and we hope to be done in February of last year. So there's an example of a project that's under construction right now. Uh, next is Los Penasquitos Bridges. This is about a $32 million project. Um, we're gonna replace four uh, old wooden trussel bridges that are about 100 years old. Um, this is one where we were able, one of the things we pride ourselves in being able to compete nationally for funds. This is one where we were able to compete for what's known as a Tiger Grant, a very competitive national program that uh, San Diego was successful and that's helping us build these. So we opened bids uh, in August of this year and we hope to have this under construction early next year. Uh, the next project is the uh, San Diego Double Track and you'll recognize uh, in, this, in this photo that the fairgrounds are here, so we're working at replacing uh, this bridge and actually putting in a stop at the fairgrounds to provide another way of getting in and out of the fair. And I want to share a really quick story about this because the importance of this bridge is that we got to figure out where it goes because ultimately the goal is to take the rail line off the Del Mar Bluffs and put it in a tunnel. So this is about a $180 million project. So we gotta make sure we point it in the right direction so we don't have to come back and knock out a bridge. Man, it is really difficult dealing with Del Mar. And you know, <laughs> Carl Hilliard was the mayor and council member and so I went to the mayor of Del Mar and I said, how about you tell me where you live? 
is I want to make sure that I have an air exchanger coming out in your backyard. <laughs> so Carl tells me, well, I have multiple houses in Del Mar. I said, well, great, I need multiple exchangers, right? <laughs> so, I can, <laughs> so we're working with Del Mar to sort of figure that out, but eventually we know we got to get the track off the bluff and put it in a tunnel, and that comes later because that's a pretty heavy lift. And so right now, the we got to make sure that the $180 million investment uh, is pointing in the right direction so that we can accommodate a tunnel in the future. Kind of moving to North County and a little bit of some of the road stuff we're doing. Um, we're in the last phases of finishing up State Route 76, a very important corridor to our residents in North County. Uh, you'll see here that we built it in phases. The, the first one we built in 1999. We did a middle segment in 2012, and we're, we're in the process of finishing the very last piece that would tie it with I-15. Here's sort of a photo of that area and what it looks like. We're, we're doing grading, and right now our, our goal is to go out, go out to construction here very shortly with that and have it done uh, by 2017. Uh, more on the road side, I'd like to move to 805, another pretty important corridor for the region. Uh, this is the north piece. Uh, we're adding carpool lanes. Uh, we're building a lot of what we call direct access ramps to give users of the carpools direct access into the ramp so they don't degrade the rest of the freeway as they move uh, over lanes. They don't have to do that because they get direct access right into the HOV system. And so here's uh, a picture of Governor Drive, a uh, project that's under construction. It started in 2013. Uh, we should be done with this by 2016. Uh, and this is, uh, you know, again, adding more HOV and a, a bigger network. Uh, moving down south to a different part of the county. Um, here you see we're uh, adding uh, roughly 11 miles. We're adding carpools again and, and, and express lanes um, uh, to, to this project. Uh, a big piece of this has already been built. And so you'll see that here um, we're, uh, you know, we're, we're moving ahead and adding HOV lanes uh, really from State Route 54 to 94, about four miles. Uh, that piece started in 2012. Uh, should be done, or was done, in March of 2014, so that piece is completed for us. Uh, we're uh, working on a piece from East Palomar to 54. That was also completed in March of this year. And right now, the last piece is we're working on a uh, East Palomar direct access ramp and a transit station, and we expect to complete that by 2015. So quite a bit of construction on the um, 805. Moving to uh, our trolley, and I think that's uh, you know, one of the iconic and one of the you know, really good transportation modes that we have in the region, our red trolleys. Uh, we've added, uh, we're in the process of rehabilitating the whole system. Uh, this is an area where I think we've uh, tried to be pretty responsible about making sure that we're taking care of the infrastructure we already have, not just worrying about building new stuff, uh, sort of fix it first approach. And so this is about a $660 million program. Uh, we've added 65 new low floor cars. Hopefully some of you have gotten to ride on those. They board much easier. They're a lot friendlier, uh, particularly for our disadvantaged communities. Wheelchairs can roll in and out. They don't have to be put on a lift and brought up. And so those are you know, a project that we're in the last throes of finishing uh, sort of the piece uh, in the south uh, of the county. So uh, that's what we're doing on, on those pieces. Um, kind of moving to these are more uh, uh, pictures of some of the stuff that we got on the blue line. The blue line is the trolley line that goes all the way down to San Ysidro. And so a bunch of that's under construction right now. And then uh, moving to uh, Midcoast, and uh, we had a, a very big day yesterday. We actually got the environmental document signed by the federal government last yesterday on the 15th, a very significant event. But we want to do an 11-mile extension of this light rail line. Uh, that would go from uh, Old Town all the way into UTC. Uh, very attractive line. It really connects two of our biggest job centers uh, and provides access from the south, the east, and the north uh, to get people from where they live to where our jobs are at. And let me run through a few photo sims so you can see here. This is a photo sim of what a station would look like at Nobel Drive. Um, here's a, sta a photo sim of what a station would look like at the VA Medical Center, and this is a very, I think, important feature of this project, uh, given the fact that we have so many returning veterans from all the wars where they've been uh, fighting for all the things that we think are important, they're coming back home. Uh, this gives them direct access 
uh, on a trolley right into the VA hospital to solve uh, any other medical needs that they might have. So we think that's a very important feature of the project. Uh, this particular light rail line ties into the University of, of California at San Diego. And here's a visual sim of what the, what the center would look like, uh, the stop would look at at a place we call Pepper Canyon, uh, but a direct stop in the middle of the campus, much like we've done at San Diego State. Um, the next visual sim here shows this going over the freeway one more time on I-5 and coming into a station at Voight Drive uh, that would uh, uh, connect this facility with the hospitals at Scripps and the UC Hospital and give patrons again more access to medical facilities uh, in that part of our region. And then kind of wrapping this up as this, this station, the line actually ends at UTC but there's also a station at Executive Drive and it comes into the heart of UTC, a really important transit project that we're well on our way to getting done. And then I want to shift over very quickly and talk about the border because we're doing some stuff at the border and uh, we're in the process of building a new border crossing and uh, we're building that in phases. Uh, what you see here is in magenta and that's under construction. And one might ask, well, why is the border important to San Diego? Why are we spending time? Why is the local government building a border crossing that arguably ought to be a responsibility of the federal government? And we believe that the rationale for that is, is we did some studies uh, to help us understand what impacts border wait times have on San Diego. And the numbers we think are pretty huge. Uh, we miss out on about $7.2 billion of economic output that is not happening in our region and in our country because the border wait times are just too long. So working with our business community, our chamber and our EDCs, we said how do we put $7.2 billion into context? And I like to say I'm a huge Charger fan and I'm feeling way better today than I was last year but we seem to always get close but not there but we like hosting Super Bowls so we went to the chamber and said we're missing out on 18 of them right here every year. Don't have to compete with Florida, don't have to compete with New York, but if we could take advantage of this opportunity at the border, it equates to about 62,000 jobs or about five Qualcomm's in the region. So we think that the border is very significant to the economy of San Diego and that's one of the reasons we've been focused at trying to take advantage of that opportunity to allow our, our, uh, our region to, uh, to, to, to prosper economically because of that trading relationship. Mexico continues to be uh, California's largest export market, the country's third leading um, export market. But one important thing I think that's to note when we trade with Mexico, when we buy a product from China, the U.S. content in a Chinese product is about 2%. It's about 98% of that product content comes from China or other parts of the world, about 2% from the U.S. When we buy a Mexican product, a lot of that's your TV, so you go home and look at your TV tonight, there's a good chance it says Echo in Mexico. 40% of the content of a product that gets imported from Mexico has U.S. content. So when you look at our trading relationship with Mexico, there's probably a positive trading balance with Mexico where we have a negative trading balance when we trade with China, and they're right next door. So we are bullish on Mexico. I know I am uh, probably running short on time here, uh, but I want to move forward on a couple of uh, rapids or BRTs uh, that we put together uh, that we're starting to implement. These are, these, they, they look like this and what is rapid? It's, uh, it provides fast frequent service with limited stops and we're really trying to create a trolley-like experience except on a bus uh, with a lot of cool features uh, to get you there. And so with that I think um, here's some routes that we have. But I want to go to, uh, we had put together a video because you may have seen a little bit of this. And if I could ask the, the video to be brought up to share with you a little bit about what, what we're doing uh, to try to market these rapid bus uh, lines. Is it wrong to call transit hot? Or is it oh so right? You think you know what it's like to take transit, but you don't know rapid. Because rapid takes hands-free travel to a whole new level freedom to text, work, and enjoy the ride with new friends. Big bright windows, more space for your stuff, 
This is what it feels like to ride rapid.